In this After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to build a basic halftone effect setup, where the dots stay sharp and round, unlike in very expensive halftone plugins. It's even possible to customize the dot shapes, simulate fake particles, or create a color print looking effect. Oh please, don't look at my messy desktop. And please don't look at this messy desktop. This is my old workstation from 2010. I know it's already a bit dusty. There is still After Effects CS5 on it. Would you feel comfortable with this UI nowadays? I used to use the Sapphire effects, a collection of really cool high-end effects. But at the end of the day, I mostly used the Texture Plasma effect and my favorite, the Halftone effect. I haven't upgraded since then because I felt that at some point I overused the effect and I realized that it wasn't just economical to upgrade the whole collection for just two effects. For me, the halftone effect fell into oblivion until I rediscovered it again. If you're pursuing a certain halftone effect style, there are a lot of tutorials out there to choose from. And basically, these are the tutorials my halftone tutorial wouldn't even exist because they all inspired me to try a different approach. So thank you to all the excellent After Effects tutors out there who led the groundwork for this halftone effect tutorial. What I am after is not a certain style, but a mechanic that creates perfect circles. Even if you have a not so fine grid of dots. And this is why trap code form is the perfect tool to go. Uh, wait a second, I don't want to replace a plugin with another plugin. In this After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you a fast and easy method first. However, if you want finer controls over the halftone effect, then you can skip to the second part of this tutorial, where we need to write little expressions though. But I'm gonna try to explain them as comprehensible as possible. But if you say, okay, expressions a bit scary for me, then you can download the preset for a little tiny tip. But if you have some minutes, then please jump with me right into After Effects. Okay, let me first explain my basic idea and why there is also a challenge with it. The technique I'm gonna show you is quite simple, not new and already done before. The approach is to use one of the numerous methods to create a perfect grid of dots, in this case with the CC ball action effect, which is the fastest method, and combine it with a card dance effect, represented by these blue squares on a separate layer. With the card dance effect, I can drive the size of the dots with a gradient map, in my case with this animated fractal noise created with a turbulent noise effect but any other footage can serve as a gradient map. To make the dots be affected by the card dance layer, I'm gonna check the adjustment layer checkbox, select the fractal noise layer in the gradient layer 1 dropdown and set this to effects and masks. Otherwise, it won't include the fractal noise effect in that layer. In the X and Y scale, I'm gonna change both source dropdowns to intensity of gradient layer 1. When I scrub through the timeline, you can see that each dot size corresponds to the luminance of the gradient map at that position. Here you can see some other examples of this effect combination in higher resolutions. And when I change the settings like I did in the first example, we can see that it also looks good in these cases. Let's take a live action footage this time. apply the channel invert effect to it, I'm gonna explain later why, change gradient layer 1 to the footage layer and hit play. Looks good in all resolutions. And if you say, okay, that's enough for what I need, you can skip the rest of this tutorial. But for me, this isn't quite satisfactory. The problem here is that we have to play around with the parameters via trial and error until the dot pattern matches with the card dance tiles. And these are just the only constellations I found. It was like looking for the next highest prime number, meaning I found them by chance. To date, I wasn't able to find any logical correlation between CC Sphere's grid spacing and card dance's number of rows. But in case one of you is a genius mathematician, please let me know this solution. So our main goal is not only to find a way to sync the dot grid with a card dance pattern, but also to make the grid resolution more or less depthlessly adjustable. 
and here is my approach. Let's start from scratch and create a new composition. Name it Halftone Effect, set the measurements to 2200 by 2200 pixels because it'll be easier to calculate in increments of 100 and set the background color to white. We can later crop it to HD format, but the base composition has to be square because it's then easier to create perfect square tiles with a card dance effect. But why not just 2000 pixels, as HD is just 1920 pixels wide? Because we later need a little headroom for a certain effect. If you want your final render to be 4K, you have to double the size. But let's leave it to 2200 pixels here. Create a new solid with the same size, color doesn't matter because it's a proxy anyway, apply a card dance effect to it and set rows and columns to columns follow rows. So we only have to deal with one parameter. To make the grid visible to us, let's change the offset to 0,9 in the X and Y scale. Then create a new null layer, name it controls and apply a slider control to it. Let's name it simply dots. I'm gonna lock the effect controls panel so it won't disappear when I open the card dance parameters in the other layer to connect the rows attribute to the dot slider with a property pick whip. With this control we can now change the resolution of the grid without needing to open multiple layer and effect hierarchies. In the expression editor of the row attribute change this comp to comp, open parentheses, quotation marks, a drop-down opens automatically and select our main composition, halftone effect. Copy this line because we're gonna use it later again. So why did I rename the expression this way? It's because the expression now clearly references to the dot slider in the halftone effect composition, which avoids expression errors when we later use pre-compositions. To create the dot grid, create a new shape layer, add an ellipse, a fill operator and set the color to black. Just place the dot somewhere here in the upper left corner. Apply a repeater operator, open it, alt-click on the copy stopwatch to enable expressions. And paste the expression we copied before in the expression editor. Now the number of copies corresponds to the slider value, which is also the number of rows and columns in the card dance effect. To find the proper distance between the dots, open transform repeater 1, alt click on the position stopwatch and type in dots equals and press ctrl V to paste the expression for the reference to the dot slider. We've just defined a variable which makes the calculations we're gonna do next look clearer. Before we go on, conclude this line with a semicolon. In the next line, we're gonna calculate the right distance by dividing the composition's width, which is 2200 pixels, by the number of dots. And here's an advanced tip. You can replace the number with this comp dot width which grabs the current width of the composition we are working in right now. This way you don't have to change this value every time you change the composition's size. Well, this causes an expression error. It's because this attribute needs both the x and y value. And it's also shown here in the black text box. So let's define this as our variable x, add another semicolon, and in the next line we're gonna type in open bracket x comma zero closing bracket. The second value is zero because we don't want the dots also go vertically, like this when I type in x instead of zero. Okay, put it back to zero. To fill the columns, just duplicate the repeater. Go to transform repeater 2, position, go into the expression editor and just swap the values in the last line, 0, x. And when I play with a dot slider, the number of the elements match, but not the position. To fix this, we have to match the dot size first to fill the square perfectly. The only thing we need to do is copy the expression of the repeater position, alt-click on the size stopwatch, paste into the expression editor and change the last line to x, x. 
So each dot's size is always identical with the distance between them. But because it still doesn't match 100%, the last thing we have to do is fix the position. To do this, we have to property link the position attribute to the ellipse's size. In the expression editor, we're gonna add divided by 2. In the After Effects coordinate system, this is 0, 0. And when the dot size is, for example, 1100, 1100, the position is always the half of it, namely 550, 550. With this calculation, the dot always fits into the upper left corner and doesn't leave a gap. And now we have a 100% match. Next we're gonna pre-compose the shape layer and name it Dots. You can see that the expressions still work. In the card dance effect, reset the X and Y scale offsets back to 1, copy the effect, Paste it onto the dots composition and delete the solid, because we don't need the proxy anymore. Now drag a footage into the composition and select one of the fit to comp options depending on your footage format. Drag the footage below the dots layer, turn it off and in the card dance effect set gradient 1 to your footage. In X and Y scale set the source to intensity 1. Now let's increase the resolution. We can already see that our setup works quite well, but there are two issues. The first one is that it looks squeezed. This is because the card dance effect tries to squeeze the HD format into the square format as the effect sits on a square composition. To fix this, pre-compose the footage to nest it into a square composition of the same size as well. Select move all attributes etc, name it footage, hit OK and it's fixed. At this point you can now change the main composition into your desired format, in my case 9020 by 1080 pixels. The other issue is that it looks quite inverted. So I'm gonna look for the channel invert effect and apply it to the footage layer. Well, nothing happens. This is because we need to set gradient layer 1 to effects and masks to include the invert effect. Well, here comes a third issue. The dots are so big that you can't identify most of them as individual dots anymore. We have to reduce the dot size somehow. And the fastest way to fix this is to add a levels effect to the footage layer and place it before the invert effect. In the levels effect, set output black to 255. That's the max value, divided by 4. I figured this out via trial and error because this is the value to make the effect look like the Sapphire plugin. I'm sorry for the red cross here, because this is just the demo version of it. Look at this. Our dots value almost corresponds to the dots frequency of the Sapphire effect. But what is a halftone effect without a rotated dot pattern? Right, it doesn't look like the typical print halftone. To perfect the look, I'm gonna adopt a genius trick that I learned from Jack in Motion's halftone effect tutorial. He's a true After Effects master, by the way. Please check out his channel, really cool guy. First, I'm gonna apply an angle controls effect to the control layer and rename it to dots angle. Then I'm gonna apply a transform effect to the dots layer. Open it up and grab the rotation pick whip to drag it onto the angles control slider. Let's try it out. And it works. But we want just the dots to rotate, not the footage. So I'm gonna copy the transform effect, paste it onto the footage layer, which rotates it even more, press double E to reveal the expression editor and add negative before the expression. This counteracts the rotation of the dots layer. And now we can control the dots angle like in the Sapphire plugin. And here's the reason why we needed the headroom in the composition size. When you scale it down to fit it into the main composition, you see that it's cropped when we rotate the dots. Another fix is to go into the footage composition and make it match the size of the main composition. In this case, I'm gonna restore the original scale because this is a 1080p footage. 
And back in the main halftone effect composition, I can reset the footage composition back to 100%, but scale it up a little more to conceal the dot gaps in the image border. Now, this looks good. I hope that the YouTube compression doesn't mess up all the fine details. And that's the basic setup. And here are some inspirations what you can do with it. Instead of the fill operator, you could use a gradient fill with type set to radial. And when we add a black solid below the dots layer, we can see that the dots are like little balls that remind of the CC ball action effect. And because the card dance effect is so versatile, we can for example play around with the Z position to add some depth. To create a color print halftone effect, I'm gonna deactivate the Z position, leave the black solid, delete the gradient fill to restore the black dots, change X and Y scale source to red 1, add a fill effect, which is automatically set to red, duplicate the dots layer, set X and Y scale to green 1, and the fill effect to green, duplicate it again, set X and Y scale to blue 1, and the fill color to blue. Looks quite psychedelic, but the magic happens when you turn off the invert and levels effect in the footage layer and set blend mode to screen. Here you go. But to complete it, select the red dots layer and set X and Y position to red 1 and the multipliers to 0, 0,02. Then go to the blue dots layer, set X and Y position source to blue 1, the X multiplier to negative 0, 0,02 and Y to positive 0, 0,02. These little offsets make it look color print like, though it's RGB, not CMYK. For the last inspiration, in case you want to customize your dot shape other than a circle, I'm gonna go back to our initial basic setup. Let's say you want a character. Pre-compose it, name it custom shape and change its size to 100 by 100 pixels. In the custom shape composition, you might need to adjust the scale and position of the shape. Next, we're gonna cut the custom shape layer, go into the dots composition and paste it there. Next, we can copy paste the shape layer size expression into the pre-composition scale expression editor. Like in the shape layer, you can get the right position if you property pick whip the scale divided by 2. Because we don't have a repeater modifier here, we need the CC repetile effect. Then we have to expand it to the right. To get the proper value, we can copy the expression of the dot sliders value from the size expression editor, paste it into the expand right expression editor and multiply it by 100. The same for the expand down attribute, so we have to property pick whip it to expand to right. Then turn off the shape layer dot and the effect should look like this, consisting of tiny little C shapes. That's it guys. The reason why I haven't shown you the custom shape method in the first place is that the repertile effect has its limits, because you can expand the layer just up to 20,000 pixels. So if you dial up the dot slider, you not only run out of dots, you could also run into a memory error message. With the shape layer method, you can at least double the amount of dots, getting a much finer grid. But this won't be the problem with my setup that you can download for a little tip, because I found a trick to overcome the limitation. My preset comes in two versions. One file contains the shape layer method, and in the other one you can customize the dots. And for those who want higher resolutions, each project file comes with a 4K version. Hope you like this tutorial. See you next time.